So we talked years ago, and you were at the Pew Internet Life Project, as you still are, about megatrends around healthcare and the internet. Do um, you remember what those kind of three megatrends were back in 2011 at that point? <laughs> They're probably still the same. Right. Um, so the first megatrend is just basic access to the internet. Um, and the second one is access to broadband, and the third one is mobile. And really, it, we have to add social um, in there as well. And um, in terms of health and healthcare, um, it's, uh, you know, access to information, access to broadband um, were wonderful. That, that's what uh, allowed people to connect to information. Um, but what I'm really excited about is the combination of mobile and social, which makes it um, less like an information vending machine and more like something that is with you all the time. And what I see as the most exciting innovation of our era is not just access to information, but access to each other. Mm. That um, so much of the real insight that um, patients and caregivers find, and this is what I find in my field work, when I ask them, what is the most important thing? What was the, what was the turning point in your care and really figuring out what you should do? Um, of course, people still go to um, a clinician for diagnosis and treatment, mm -hmm. but it was finding someone like them. It was finding a community online, especially if they're dealing with something rare, and that's really the social revolution um, that's coming to health So you've described this uh, variously as peer-to-peer uh, -peer healthcare, yep. right? Um, and, uh, and then rise of e-patients. Yes. Um, how has that changed uh, the way that people are able to make treatment decisions and what kinds of uh, percentages in terms of the people who are doing this are we seeing now versus say four years ago? So we've asked um, a couple of questions um, over a 12-year trend and um, as the internet population has grown the percentage of people who say they go online for health information has remained stable. Mm -hmm. So when we were at 50% internet penetration and now that we're near 85% internet penetration in the U.S. Right. In the US yeah. that it's, uh, it's about 8 in 10 who say they go online for health information. Um, most people are starting in a search engine and, and um, there are, there's a significant segment who say they do go online for a self-diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It's often a second opinion, mm -hmm. Dr. Google's second opinion. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really stable. Um, the peer-to-peer -peer healthcare piece, which um, we've been measuring over the years, is also frankly pretty stable. So we ask it in a couple different ways. We ask the last time you needed um, uh, a health question answered, did you go to a clinician, family and friends, or someone like you? Um, and we also ask, have you ever looked online for someone like you, someone who shares your same condition? And it's been really stable between 15 to 20 percent of internet users say answer yes to those sort of peer questions. Mm -hmm. And actually, I haven't seen that much growth. Mm. Even as we see growth in all sorts of other aspects of um, consumers, you know, seeking reviews and seeking information about big decisions in their lives, um, the internet is still a major source. But I haven't seen growth. In, in that segment, the peer-to-peer -peer segment. Now, what about data sharing? Because I've, I've heard the quip, and I'm not sure who to attribute to, but <laughs> when um, cancer walks in the front door, privacy leads out the back. Mm. That when people are faced with uh, life-threatening illness, yeah. their um, decision-making is affected because they want to either stay alive or help someone they love stay alive. And so they're, may, they may be willing to trade uh, the information, their own health data, uh, they may be willing to participate in, in random nice trials for new drugs to do all kinds of things because their life's in the line. Yep. Um, now, mobile devices, sensors, the ability for clinicians to gather and share data, that's all dramatically shifted in the last decade, certainly in the last five. Um, are people doing it more? So it's a really tough question. So we haven't asked um, a lot of national survey questions about the specific topic of sharing data, for, for example, in a clinical trial or something so specific as that. Um, we have asked questions, for instance, about self-tracking data. So we found seven out of 10 American adults are, are tracking some aspect of their health. And it's only about one third who share that data with anyone else. So there's this big well of data that people are not sharing. Mm -hmm. um, people living with chronic conditions are more likely to share. Um, 
And so that speaks to me of a higher motivation. The sicker you are, the more likely you are to share your tracking data, mm -hmm. and the more likely you are to share it with a clinician. Now, one of the questions that I think is still an open question is the commercial side of this, that um, a lot of the interesting apps, a lot of the devices, um, you know, whether we're talking about glucometers, whether we're talking about pacemakers, whether we're talking about Fitbit, these are for-profit companies that own that data. Mm. These are not open. Um, so this is really an interesting question because if there's going to be, for example, an interface between the Apple Health Kit and Mayo, just as an example, mm -hmm. is that a model for what's going to happen? Is it going to be something where these for-profit companies develop the tools that are really useful for consumers, and so they start tracking their blood pressure or whatever it is that they are trying to solve in their life, um, but the data is owned by Apple? You know, that seems interesting mm -hmm. it's intriguing um, and I'm not sure that everyone has really thought that all the way through which is mm -hmm. why I think Health Data Blues is a wonderful place to be with other health geeks mm -hmm. and start talking about it what are the other big unanswered questions you're coming away from today with like, I think a really big question is um, you know, as there were as there were t over two thousand people here, and we're all passionate about this stuff. Um, are there really consumer applications that are going to capture the imagination of regular folks? Um, for the most part, people don't think about their health unless they have to. Um, there is certainly a market segment of people who are. Um, dealing with chronic conditions, who are dealing with life-changing diagnoses. Um, but is this ever going to really go mainstream? Like weather data, like GPS mm -hmm. data? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so so that is still a really big open question to me. Okay, if people want to learn more about your research, where should they go online? Uh, PewInternet.org or SusannaFox.com. All right.